Hello, my peeps. Um, the computer was just spinning and spinning and spinning. And I thought, maybe we won't be doing this card tonight. This card is so cute. Look at this little ladybug. I mean, come on. Um, it's uh, Thursday, this and that. I have a this and a that tonight. <laughs> um, this is this awesome card. And that is going to be why you need to own this ladybug punch. <laughs> Um, I, I'm not a very good salesman. I don't ever push hard sales. Half the time I use stuff and I don't even tell you what it is or the fact that I sell it or the catalog or I don't any of that stuff. But I can tell you, you need to have this punch. Um, and this is a step set that comes with it, which is also great. I love this leaf. So I'd say get them both. But um, but mostly I'm going to focus on why you need this punch. I, I, had, uh, I had seen a couple things and I thought, I wonder what else is there. And seriously, it's sometimes you just have to look at it. This is actually probably the way to look at it. Um, here, I'll give you a sneak peek of what's coming. First thing I saw when I looked at this punch, an alien. <laughs> yep, I saw an alien. Maybe I can make the alien focus. Whoa. Come on, dude. Or maybe I can't. Nope. Oh, well, <laughs> I'll get that figured out eventually. Um, anyways, yeah, you can, there's so many different things. And I'd seen a couple other ones that I'll show you that other demonstrators came up with. And then I found a couple other more as I was playing. Um, it, it's, it's just one of those punches you can do a lot with. Um, speaking of punches, this is the new punch um, in the new catalog called the Decorative Circle Punch. I was so excited for this and I'm so excited to have it now that you will see it in use on a card tomorrow, possibly tonight. I don't know if I'll actually decorate tonight's card just because um, I have a lot to show you. And so it will depend how much time it all takes. Um, and you'll get, once you see the first one decorated, you'll get the gist. So I don't know if I need to decorate both of them. Um, I'm stalling because I am waiting to try to make the comments show up and it's unresponsive. Pages that are unresponsive. Well, I'll close the other one that's unresponsive because we don't care about that. And let's see if that helps this response page. <laughs> um, I had an awesome day today. I went to the chiropractor, which always makes me feel better, um, which is on the south side. It's about an hour's drive from my house. I've been seeing the same chiropractor for 20 years. Uh, when I was in high level and I used to drive to the city, I would see him at, at this end. And I had uh, one of his actually classmates, it turned out to be, who was my chiropractor in high level until he moved. Um, so I kind of like chiropractors at either end. <laughs> yep, that's how I roll. Um, so yeah, it was it's nice to do that. But because it's so far away, because you know I like to make a milk run and stop on everything on the way. I also stopped by my old office today, and it was so nice to see people. It was very fleeting. It's for a few minutes chatting, just kind of catching up, seeing the new office building and stuff like that. Um, the whole time I worked for Forestry, and and it, I will not be the first person or the last person to say it. Um, that job is people. You spend so much time together, weeks at a time on fires and long days and in the office and you get to know them and their families and everything about each other. And, and uh, it is the people that made that job. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was lots of fun to see them today. So hi everyone and thanks for that. Oh, hello, Jen. Okay, hey, look, it took me that long to get the comments to come up, but I got them now. <laughs> okay, I'll quit playing with the, uh, the, um, I'm just about out of my tear and tape, and I am so glad that I noticed this as I, just as I was about to start because whew, we're ready. <laughs> okay, so here's the card. Big reveal. I like the big reveals. Can you tell? This is just so I don't forget to tell you that. That's you can you may or may not need this particular piece. Bum, bum, bum. So this the other thing that was to do, not to tease you is to show you that this is a very thick card. So yes, you can mail it, but it will take some extra postage. But I, like, I wanted to start with it in the envelope. So you would believe me when I tell you it fits in the envelope. So here is oh, so exciting, our ladybug card. I'm such a dork. I totally know that. And I have absolutely no problem with it. OK, look how cute these ladybugs are. Oh, look how cute this card is. It actually stands like this. But I figured you wouldn't. if I did that, you wouldn't be able to see it. But look at this card. Is this card not awesome? Her card was like pink and flowery. Uh, I don't, I don't really relate to pink and flowery. <laughs> Let's just say that. Um, so I hand cut all these little leaves. I, like I said, I like that leaf from the stamp set, and I made some ladybugs. 
and it sits like this and it's a panel fold card and then I like to like have things hanging over I don't know why I like that so much I just like the look of it so much thank you Jen it is awesome oh by the way this is not my card I mean this is my card I totally made it but uh, let me see what I write that it was made by a lovely British lady named Heidi I forgot her last name her website is Flutterby, which is what we use oh hello Paulette, Paulette. Uh, which is what we used to call butterflies, flutterbys. It's flutterby Heidi, and it is like .co.uk or however they do theirs. And she calls it a display panel card. So yeah, her, and hers I don't think hung off the edge, but I figured as long as as long as you made sure that yeah you kept the outside edge the same, then you could do this. Sorry, we all of a sudden have massive honking going on. Isn't this this card is like so fun and happy and okay. And it does even in every angle of it is a uh, is a good is a good like a good view like this is what you see when you take it out. So I did I did leave it like this on the inside, thinking, and then you can just write on here. But then it occurred to me that maybe that's not a lot to write. <laughs> and in her sample, she added this piece to the back. So you have that option as well. You could just add an entire piece to the back, so you have something to write. So whichever one works for you. So now, well, we all marvel at this card. I will, I will, uh, like I said, I'll show you how this this one all goes together. I'm trying to kind of figure out how to display it, like open, but where you can actually see it up, the close enough. Okay, so before I get to making of this card, though, I'm going to show you why you need to have the ladybug punch. <laughs> Once I started making this card, I will tell you, I will tell you how I came up, uh, where my mind went last night when I was doing it, but. I had already cut the red paper and got it all done. Otherwise, you might have seen a totally different card. Because as I was doing it, and then I'm like, oh, I'm going to make samples of all the different things I can think of doing with this ladybug punch. And then as I got going, I thought, I wonder if I can, instead of making it like just the ladybug, can I make like a garden party where it's all of the things that you would find outside? But then it decided that that wouldn't work with the red base. <laughs> so I thought, well, maybe if I made a green base. And then, but then I went down a, a rabbit hole. <laughs> Uh, my niece is in the summer firefighters. Oh, good job. It, it is, it is, it is a hard job, Paulette. It is um, safe. It is safety first. So it's a safe job. Um, safety is like super, super important. And it is emphasized all the time. Um, but it is definitely a hard job. It is a lot of hours. Sometimes it is heat. It is bugs. It is cold. It is rain. Uh, it is. I cannot imagine having a different job. That was like the best job. Um, so I'm glad she's doing that. I hope she has a great summer. Uh, oh yes, my my sorry, <laughs> squirrel, my garden party. So I thought, and that's what I was going to call the card, garden party. And I was going to put everything on it. Now I don't actually know if it would have come across in real life as good as it did in my mind. But here's our ladybug punch. Let's find a way to put this. Actually, no, I'll, I'll just gonna move this card out of the way for a minute. <laughs> okay, so the ladybug, which was easy. <laughs> the ladybug is this. I punched this in black, this in red. Oh, this was. I mean, basic black. This is real red, although I'm sure you can do a bunch of different things. I will make one more attempt at getting this thing to focus. These are the classic black matte dots. Nope, oh, just black matte dots. So they're uh, three dimensional. There you go. So you could you could put like punch out little pieces of paper to put there. You could stamp the uh, stamp set. Comes with um, like you could stamp black onto the red cardstock. I like the look and I like the, the dimension of using the, I'm, I'm afraid to touch too many things other than the things I planned. <laughs> I feel like I'll start a landslide on my desk. Um, I like the look of these dots and I used all the big ones. There is smaller ones, so I guess you could, you could do however you wanted. Okay, so there was that. So there's my alien, <laughs> put him back in the mix. Um, I, I was trying to make one out of glimmer paper and I had the, the in colors. So I picked like the darkest chunk of the ombre I could get, but it's still not black enough. But these two colors, in case you were ever wondering, uh, what did I use? I used Star Starry Sky and Sweet Sorbet. These two colors together are totally Spider-Man colors. Like, there's a dude in the night, you know, Spider-Man arrives just in time, that dude. So you could make these out of anything, but yes, you can cut glimmer paper easily. Speaking of spiders, <laughs> This might be one of my favorites. It's adorable. Um, I really have to figure out a way to make this camera. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Klutzy hand. 
So all I did with this guy, I punched one of the bases, oops, one of the bases, and I just trimmed off the antennas off the base. And then I punched out four more, like just ahead. You don't even need that much of it, right? You can just punch it on the edge. And all I did was cut them and there's my good old Terran tape, stuck them on the back so that we have a spider with eight legs. Spider. Ooh, second time, perfect. Uh, this was one that I had seen as soon as I saw the ladybugs come out. The very next, like most popular thing that I saw was the bee. <laughs> now, I don't actually know who came up with the bee or how it was done. I just sort of made my own up. I remembered there was stripes and I remembered there was vellum. So these vellum wings, uh, the vellum punches really easily. So you could do all sorts of stuff with vellum. Anything that needed wings, you could pretty much punch out of vellum and make those wings. It just happened to work for the bee. And then all I did for the, so I punched a black body out and I took a tiny little piece of, of um, black cardstock and I just made a point so he could have his little stinger. Um, I just cut three strips. I put, I actually put two strips of tear and tape on a little chunk of yellow cardstock. So it already had the tear and tape on it, cut it into three equal strips, stuck it on there and then just trimmed around the edge. So you have a striped bee. So we have the bee. Um, I saw a bunny. <laughs> In, in there. Um, the only thing with the bunny, <clears throat> and I think you could, if like, I, did, I didn't get as far as putting a face on because I was like, eh, what am I going to do? I'll punch things? I don't know. So I think you could also do this, like move the ears up a little bit so you leave a little bit more of the head and put a tail on it so it's like you're looking at the backside of the bunny. But when I did this, this was really cute. And then I just needed something to cover, like these are set on over top of the bigger piece. I don't know that you can really see that. You can kind of, not really well. So I just wanted something there. So I was making like a little, you know, headband, flower headband kind of thing. Uh, and then we have the Flutterby. <laughs> so this one is all DSP. And seriously, what is wrong with my, my fancy camera? You can see all my dog scratches. So this one, I cut the base out of the darker DSP. And then I cut the flowery DSP for the wings. I stuck the wings on the base. Oops, put that back on camera. Uh, so I just stuck them on the whole thing, like just to make it. And then all I did was I just kind of trimmed in between here. There was a little, you could see a little bit of the base there. And I did the same thing down here. I just kind of freehanded it to get a little pointy bottom. Now, when I was doing this, I thought, I think butterflies are supposed to have a skinnier, and you could, like you could push the wings in more and make this whole, whole thing skinnier. But I kind of liked my, my chunky little butterfly, so. There's the butterfly. And then I had seen, I, somebody else had done the butterfly as well. That was not an original idea, but when I see them, I think, oh, butterfly, but I never actually pay attention enough or, or half the time saved the pictures. So I have no idea what the other lady's butterfly looked like. I was just like, oh yeah, butterfly wings. Could you do a dragonfly? Dragonflies have two big wings and two little wings. So I'm not sure if that would work. Although I guess you could freehand those bits and stuff. It, it does definitely work better with the butterfly. Um, somebody else had made flowers out of them. And so this was just two sets of leaves. I should have used something that was easier to see. So here's one leaf and here's another leaf. And I just sort of butted them up against each other. And then I turned them 45 degrees. It wasn't even a full 90. And I put two more pieces, right? And then just stuck a little punched out circle in the middle. This one happens to be a three quarter inch, which comes from this very old punch that comes in very handy. Um, but I'm sure there are the the uh, brand new, what are they called? Stylish shapes, the new dies. They have a very small circle. That, there's six of them, I think, different shapes. And the very smallest one um, is pretty close to this. And actually would have like a little stitching around it. So it'd make kind of a nice effect too. I punched this out of DSP because I wanted to see what it would look like. So this is the, uh, the rare, Mournville drone, uh, pink leopard flower. <laughs> and then my final one, because I thought, well, this little flower is cute, but I like big flowers. <laughs> I like big flowers, I cannot lie. Um, so I made a sunflower, <laughs> which in hindsight, I should have embossed this middle piece because it's a very big flat brown piece. Although if I put like a butterfly landing on it, I could, I could tone down this big brown piece. So this one, I, I, I will tell you this because I did it two ways. My, I did use one sheet of cardstock, but looking at it in the, in the picture, I can see that uh, 
they look like different colors. So I, I punched four of them to begin with. And I stuck them to the back side of this. I, I would, I can show you, but I put a fake thing on the back. So um, using just using tear and tape. And I put it just like right up to where the little crotch <laughs> between the two petals would be. So I put four of them on. So then I turned the flower and I punched four more and I thought I'll just put them this way between them. But when you when you leave them together and you put them on, they kind of point at weird angles. So it's okay, it's just a roughed up looking flower. So the second four, I just cut like straight down the middle, not even like didn't even care what it was, just cut them down the middle. And then I just stuck one in between each of the sets. And that's just on the back. And then because I had used tear and tape and I had just put like a bunch of tear and tape across, I just punched out a circle to stick on the back. This one was, uh, I'm not sure if the dies are exactly the same, but it's like, like about a two inch circle. And, and like I said, I did this just because of the mess I made. If you used white glue, you could probably do it a lot neater than I did with that. But anyways, I made a big, I made a big sunflower. So not all punches <laughs> can do this many things, but this punch can do this many things. So that's why you need a ladybug punch. I did have a great deal of fun playing with that punch. <laughs> okay, I will take a picture of all of these. Well, maybe not my Spider-Man one because it didn't really work out, but I will take a picture of those to post when I post my stuff later. So now back to our regular scheduled programming, let's make a display panel card. I just can't get over how much I like this card. I just, I like the way it turned out. Okay, so I'm, I'm experimenting with this one. As you can see, I've used totally different materials. Um, and I wanted to see if you could make each one of these layers a different color or if it would look, hmm. so we're about to find out. The other thing I'm going to show you, sneak peek. So when you spend $200 or more on an order, you qualify for hostess rewards. So that's free product. So you get money that you can use to buy anything. But there's also at the very, very back, like it's the last page, second last page, it's way at the back of the book. Um, there's hostess. Um, items you can get that you can only get with hostess rewards. So there's a couple stamp sets, which I brought one of them in here. Oh, here we go. Here's one of them. And so this is like the stamp set would normally be worth, you know, $30 or whatever, but you use to use hostess rewards, I think it was 18 or 20. So you get like a really cool stamp set for less using your hostess dollars, but you could only buy it with hostess dollars. So in the last catalog, they had a party pack of paper that was awesome. That's actually where I got all this black and white that I used on this card. So in the new annual catalog that just came out, there's a new party pack. This is the party pack. It is called, it's not called the party pack. I just keep calling it that, Design a Daydream. And if I'm not mistaken, there's a bit of elements in here from like each of the different papers in the, or suites or something in the new catalog. First off, these colors, you cannot go wrong with. Oh my goodness, they're nice. But look at this paper. There's birds, there's patterns. Let me try to do this. There's stripes. I'm gonna see if I can stop at the one stripe that I like the absolute most. There's some pink, some flowers. There's uh, kites, more little stripes, little circles, some more patterns, some little asterisk looking flowers, little bikes. Everybody likes the bike. Bikes are hot topic right now. Um, I do love this green pattern on the back of this one. This is my, I love this stripe. Uh, petal pink, I'm going to say uh, mint macaron, I'm guessing, I'm, I would have to double check that, blackberry bliss, uh, daffodil delight, old olive, love this big bold stripe, a little bit of cross hatching, see this is a stamp in another, in another suite, that's what makes me think it's that, um, this one is a really nice neutral background, it's kind of the petal pink looking, but it's just a nice subtle pattern, so you could actually stamp on top of this too if you wanted to. Um, the bold blackberry bliss, some circles, some little cool diamond pattern. And then, yeah, the backside of these flowers, there's four each of each sheet too. So if you're doing a class or big projects, um, it's awesome because you have enough paper that um, you can do more than just a couple things with it. And then, yeah, this one is again, like green, kind of looks like tile almost. It's very nice. Anyway, so this pack of paper is awesome. So that's what I decided to delve into. So that's what I have here. So I will, I'm going to put all the measurements because there's a there's that many <laughs> measurements that you need. Here, I'll do it tomorrow. Always does and let you screenshot if you want. So this is all the measurements, and I will put them in the blog with some extra pictures. 
on Saturday. But in the meantime, I will just tell you <laughs> how things go. So these the panels were easy, right? I just cut a shape of DSP or a shape, a rectangle of DSP and a rectangle of cardstock, two different sizes, two different patterns. These are our little mechanisms, and this is the back of the card. So this is nine and a half by four and an eight. And then it says in the instructions, she says to score it at one inch, two inch, seven and a half, eight and a half. And so when I looked at that, I thought, okay, once again, <laughs> Tracy's pet peeve comes into play and you're basically just scoring it two inches and one inch from each end. So if you don't want to do, if you don't want to open your whole thing and take up your whole desk, you just score it two and one from each end. We'll come back to this one in a minute. And then these are the, these little mechanisms are these pieces here, right? That's the little Z right here that holds the two panels. Those are what she calls the mechanisms. And the same thing, she wants you to score it at three quarters and one and three quarters, which is basically three quarters in from each end. We're gonna three quarter that. Should have run one of these of us. Guess you didn't need to see me score both of them. And then you're gonna fold them into like a Z, right? So we're gonna, and when I did it the first time I thought, well, did I do this wrong? It's not even, but no, that is what you're supposed to be doing. There we go. So we're making two of those. Let me just finish the second one because I need it to make the card. Yeah, uh, three quarters. I'm curious if I did the first one at three quarters or at half. I think I did that at three quarters. I'm gonna score that and we're gonna burnish too. Okay, so once you've cut, there's not a whole lot of scoring. That was, that was pretty easy scoring. <laughs> okay, but we, we do wanna burnish the our little bins because I keep picking stuff that is like so impossible to see because we want a nice crisp card. So we are going to make, we're going to fold in on the score line. Let's see if I find the score line. There we go. We're going to fold in on the score line and then we're going to fold out on the score line. <laughs> There's the base of your card. Now you'll notice on this one that there's a bit of an angle here. You don't have to angle it. Um, the lady that made it said, it just looks a little nicer. And I think she's right. It does look a little nicer. So this is how, sorry, <laughs> temporarily lost my scissors. So this is what she did to do it. So when she, in her video that I watched, um, she said, so you just go down and I don't, I, if, she, if she said what measurement you go down, I have no idea what it was because I didn't hear it, but it looked like she was going down about half an inch. So, so that's what I did. I went down about a half an inch and you're going to cut straight across the first scored section. And then you're going to turn your card and you're going to go from this corner here to where you just cut. And that is how she got her nice little angle. Now, because I just went, eh, that's about a quarter or about a half an inch. Here's what you do. You take the piece you just cut off and you see how, oops, it doesn't matter that I just bent it. You see how this is gonna go like this now? Just to use that, stick it over top. We'll use that as our little template. Cut the first chunk. This is now garbage. Um, but now they're the same dimension because I used one to template the other. So I cut the first chunk and then I'm gonna go from the corner to where I just cut once again. And now I have, my pretty angled look. That was it. <laughs> that was it. That was the trimming. Uh, yeah, honestly, I don't think I need my scissors for anything else. Uh, I'm going to just gonna burnish these little guys. Uh, again, <laughs> if I was to ask you guys, hey, who knows? Who knows what my favorite adhesive is? I'm going to guess everybody would be able to tell because I think I say it every single time. So you could use my favorite adhesive. You could use white glue. I would think you could use the seal plus. But I don't, I don't know that I would use the seal just because it's very hard not to do this. So you want something that's, you know, super durable and is going to last because you just can't help yourself. Now, 
I have to cheat because all of a sudden I have forgotten where my card is going. There we go. Okay. So once these are done, there we go. This is how we want the Z. So we want the Z to be looking like as if you were reading it, right? Like as if I was, you know, I was writing the word pizza. This is how the Z looks. And I'm going to put adhesive on this side, and I'm going to put adhesive on this side. Where's my adhesive? There we go. Again, it was also very hot today. I'm going to use that as part of my excuse. It's very hot today. The heat exhausts me. Um, it, well, it's a good thing I got another one because I got exactly that much. I didn't even get one length out of it. Okay, let's try that again. It always looks like more because it sticks to the roll. So that first wraparound is actually stuck to the roll. So I think when you're doing stuff like this, the, the cards hold together better, but I think they also look better. There's no gaps on them. If I'm going to put the other one on afterwards, because all of a sudden now I've confused myself. And um, this one is backwards how the other one went yes um and now i can't remember if uh, if it's easier to put it on before or after so i'm just going to wait for now these are just to get the little mechanisms in place then when we do the panel i will put it on uh anyways yes i don't like the gaps so generally when you're making something you want to put tape as close as you can to the score line so that when the things match up they're nice and tight but if something's a half an inch wide or three quarters of an inch wide and you only have one piece, well, then this piece is going to be kind of loose. So it's not going to look as good. So two pieces of tape it is, or a good swath of white glue would, would work as well. Okay. So now, I'm going to put this. So this is my, remember my Z is going the right way. I'm going to put this, try to figure out how, lined up right in the, how about if I put that on camera, right in the bottom corner here. So I want it right to the bottom and right to the corner of this, the front panel. So you see how this folds, right, to, to make the front. And now we have our little Z in front of it. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing on this one. Only this one we're doing it left-handed versus right-handed. So now in this one, our Z is backwards, but we're still going to the bottom outside corner of the outside panel. Okay, so now we have our folds, folds, folds. We have folds galore going on. Now we're going to attach our panels, which I did not put the DSP on. Okay, so first comes the two bigger ones. These ones, uh, if by the way, if you happen to go to her website, if you find her Flutter by Flutter by Heidi, and you go to her website, oops, the one measurement she has for the pat the big panel of DSP, one of them is wrong. Um, she writes three and an eighth for one of the dimensions, when it's actually three and three eighths. So, because I did, I cut the first piece when I was making the other card and it worked well like this way, but then this one was really short. And I looked at it and I noticed that in all the other measurements, she had made her DSP a quarter inch smaller than the cardstock, but in the one measurement, she made it a half an inch smaller. So it should have been three and three eighths instead of three and five eighths. Sorry, I said one eighth, um, which is easy to do. When you start getting into eighths and sixteenths, it's harder to do. So if you are going there, just know that one of her measurements is incorrect. Okay, so there's two panels. I probably could have just done that part ahead of time. So as, as I'm rambling on, and you guys are patiently watching to see how this comes together, um, can anybody think of any other, or have you seen any other samples of things done with the ladybug punch? Because it's, it's a genius little punch. There's got to be more. If you can come up with that much, there's got to be more. I like this. Um, I really like this tear and, or seal. Now that I'm used to it, <laughs> really like it. Um, 
I go through a lot of it, so I'm very happy it came back in stock after <laughs> like 12 refills. Okay, but even for these, because these are what you hold on to when you pull, I'm going back to my stronger adhesive. Okay, so now we're gonna put our panels on. Oh, you know what I forgot? Like totally forgot the piece for the back. <laughs> I totally forgot that. Stand by one. What color am I going to do this in? See now, because this and this is what makes me think. Hmm. This will make it easy for pictures to see. But I am not total. I'm not sure. I'm not totally sold on the whole. How many different colors of paper can I put in this thing? Mm hmm. It, I'm also wondering what color. What color to put behind here? Maybe I will. Uh, maybe I will cut my losses, and instead of this one, I layered black and white. But instead of adding too many extra colors, because uh, I think I have enough going on right now, I am just going to go with. I'm just going to go with one color. So stand by one while I walk away from the screen and cut a piece of paper. The the um I think because this maybe started out as. Um, an A4 card piece, like the British size, which their paper is longer and narrower, I think. Um, so she'd have made it fit their their card and their envelope. Um, this turns out to be an odd, like it's not it's not one of our standard card bases. If you if you cut a whole bunch of layers, like I always have a whole bunch of layers standing by, just to add to cards. Um, this one is not standard. It's a slightly off. This one is five and a quarter by three and seven eighths, or five, if you want the second layer, five by three and five eighths. So it's just a, a slightly off, but we'll just do white. There we go. Okay. So now we are going to put on our, um, our big layer. So we're putting the big layer on this first panel. This is where I said I had to remember what I was doing. Um, so I'm going to put tear and tape here. And again, I'm doing two because I want nice and secure. And I'm doing it on both sides. Actually, not. Well, I have the tear and tape out. I was afraid if when I started doing this and I said, I'll wait to do the other one, I was afraid I was going to put it on the wrong side. I had it in my mind that I needed to put it on the front of this panel, but then somehow at the last minute I thought, I don't have time to recut all these papers. Is that actually right? So since we have this out, we'll do this too. Now, if you're using white glue, don't put it on ahead of time. Because I'm assuming you will have quite the mess by the time you're done. But such is the beauty of tear and tape that I can do it all at once. Just peel and go as I need it. Okay, where'd my little take pick tool go? Okay, so I am curious. I have no more comments coming. I had a bunch coming and now I have no more comments coming. So I'm curious if it's something with the comments or if you guys are all just mesmerized by the card. Okay, so I am going to take that off. So here's my first panel and you wanna put this nice and tight against the edge. Now you wanna still be able to, to fold the card. So I find it, instead of leaving it flat, if you fold this up, I didn't mean to set that down there yet. Uh, if you fold up this edge a little bit, it'll keep you from putting it too far in because you don't, you don't want it so far over that you can't fold the card up. And then just push it up against, and it fits top to bottom, it fits right in there. Okay, I crook it because I'm trying to do it. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm just gonna do it like I have to do it in real life and hold it really close to my face. And fold my card base up and do it like that. There we go. See, so because if I do it that way, then I can do it. <laughs> okay, so there's one there. Um, I was trying to do it so you guys could see, but <laughs> but if you can see, I can't see. Okay, so there's the other one. I'm gonna, I, this isn't this pretty paper. <laughs> this is Blackberry Bliss and it's just tone on tone um, with some kind of big, huge flower. I don't even know what it is, but it is pretty. I dropped this one down again too. Okay, here, maybe if I do it this way, <laughs> we can see. So I'm folding it up, I'm pushing it over, pushing it down. There we go. So now we have our first layer. 
of our card. Now we need to put on this layer. Oops, I think I put the little, oh, I did. <laughs> totally was not paying attention. And somehow when I did, I went right past the bottom. Uh, that's okay, we'll fix it. Now we're gonna put the other ones on and same as this one. Only this time, I think I'm gonna try to do it folded so I can, so I can minimize the crookedness on the bottom. And why is this? Oh no, it does show. Okay. Um, so this one goes. Sorry for a minute. I thought I did it wrong. So this one lines up against the edge as well of this one. But I'm gonna because, I, like I said, because I went a little bit crooked. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the second one crooked too, so they line up on the bottom. And this one. So I'm going on the outer edge of the panel. Right, so this is, I guess if I hold it up like this. So I'm putting this edge lining up on this edge. So I'm going outer edge to outer edge. There we go. So now, I didn't, I didn't actually notice this because it was red on red on red on red that, that you can see the red right here. So now when I did this with my tri-color, I said, I'm not, I don't think I'm completely sold on the whole tri-color thing, but I forgot you could see the, the piece here. But you can see how easily those panels went together. Maybe, maybe don't follow my advice and do this many colors and <laughs> maybe keep all of the base pieces one color. But you see how easy that card went? And then you can stretch it out as much as you want. So then the only thing you have to remember here, I'll use this for an example. The only other thing you have to remember is like this one. So I, yes, I have the leaves hanging off the edge because like I said, it's a, it's a thing of mine. I like to do that. But I made sure that the even hanging off, it still stayed within the top of the card. When I put this happy birthday in the middle, this card's very floppy. Uh, I made sure like I, it's just hanging loose, right? It's only on one side. <clears throat> I just made sure that it wasn't like so far over that it hit this piece, right? You still need to have everything still needs to fold. These pieces are fine and they do overlap a little bit, but because they're such big pieces, when you go to fold them up, it still folds up very easily. So if you wanted to do the same on this one, um, like I said, you want to go do this. These are supposed to line up perfectly. My one card that is like one piece that is really crooked is keeping that from happening. But depending what you put, like once you put something on the white in the back, you probably wouldn't even notice it. Uh, let me see. Her card, she had, she had die cut a bunch of stuff, and I think she I think she put the sentiment in the there. She didn't actually have a sentiment going across the middle. I just like that. Um, I guess you could do it on the outside too, but no, on the outside one, I think it would pull apart too far, and it would it would be kind of skewed, a little weird. But yeah, if you're putting it on the middle, like I did. Just know that it has to fit. Like you could, you could off center it, like stick it to this one, because <clears throat> it's not going to go over. But yeah, just make sure that wherever you put stuff, you you've left room for things to still fold and things to go over top. So that is how easily. And she called this a display panel fold. So uh, yeah, I can't I can't get on board <laughs> with these. I like all of the elements. Um, it's just too much for me altogether. So I'm not going to finish this card. I'm going to make a yellow card, <laughs> or a, this is daffodil, a daffodil card, a blackberry card, and probably an old olive card um, by removing these pieces <laughs> and, and making it a little bit less crazy. And then those ones all decorate. So let's go back to the one that worked out. <laughs> so cute, if I do say so myself. Um, what else did she do different? So yes, she had cut out a bunch of DSP. Her front panels were white cardstock though. I'm trying to remember what she did. I can't remember the picture now. Um, but yeah, you have options. You can, this is like some punch art. Like I said, I stamped and, and die cut this. This could be stamped instead of being DSP. You could make it all the same DSP. This back piece could be DSP. Like you have lots of decorating options. But I will say, I'm pretty chuffed with how cute these ladybugs turned out. And just for Donna, special for Donna. You'll notice there's three ladybugs and each ladybug has three things per wing. So it's as visually pleasing as I can make it. So there we go. 
uh, where'd my other, where'd my other pile of goodies go? Like this, I take pictures of all these things and post them. Um, did anybody come up? No, nope, see nobody's no comments are coming through. Um, anybody else come up with anything else you can do with the bee punch? I'd like to know. It's just in that my spider and my my bumblebee are entangled. There we go. The display panel card. Bumblebee punch. Well, I certainly enjoyed myself this evening. <laughs> um, I hope you guys did as well. Oh, I'm just shy on my 45 minute mark. That's awesome. Um, I will. Oh, I will end a little bit early. Don't like I said. Don't forget the back piece. I forgot it on the sample one back piece. If you'd like more writing room. And somewhere I have an envelope. I have no idea what I did with the envelope that went with that card. There we go. Um, with this cute little ladybug stamp on it. So. Lots of fun to be had. I would love to see if you guys try making any of these, especially the, the display panel card. I'd love to see how you decorate them. And I, I'm still looking for more uh, ideas to go in the ladybug punch repertoire. <laughs> so feel free to share. Uh, thank you, ladies, for joining me. I uh, hope you guys have an awesome weekend. I will be back on Tuesday with something because, yes, I don't plan that till usually Sunday. So I have no idea what I should start doing that better so I can say something other than something. But I will be back on Tuesday with something. Uh, tomorrow, I will post my my challenge cards. Uh, that's not a live. That's just posting my challenge cards. This week's sketch challenge, if you want to get in on that. And um, yeah, watch for the dimensions for all of this stuff on my blog on Saturday. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely evening. It's been fun, uh, fun crafting with you. Take care. <laughs>